All right, I called the live house season because at the point in time I was actually in the midst of announcing my flagship store where we sell live house clothing and like um, like a boutique style fashion room for the fans and get an opportunity to rock with our rock. So besides the store, and then we had a lot in the making, like I was redoing my donk, I just wanted to redo my jewelry and a lot of other childish antics and stuff like that. So I just called it like, yeah, it's live out season, it's our season, we about to turn up. I had added another room to my studio. So I just had a lot of stuff in the making for like the last two years and I felt like that was the mark. I unleashed the beach, you know what I mean? So I gave them some music that didn't make the album, Damage is Done too, And I just um, went back and um, rocked with the, um, three of my most favorite DJs from Miami that been embracing me with the mixtape scene for a long time, which was DJ Smokey Bear, Op Scene, and Killer K, you know what I mean? And I just connect with them boys because we always did tapes together since when I first started. So who better to bring it live house season in with three of the dudes that helped me kick off Ice Billion Berg to get to the live house season. So that's what it is. The artwork for live house season is actually me sitting in my store. It's a five foot by six foot LH. What's well, a five foot by five foot LH? made out of wood and steel piping that I actually created and I actually designed and I actually physically built with my hands. If you could refer back to my um, Live House store Instagram, you will see it. So that LH like symbolic to me and stuff. It light up in the back. And you know, it was just an introduction of a different bird. You know what I mean? Showing them like, yeah, the kid that used to wear the bandanas all that, he got a different side to him that he want the world to see. And that's the businessman bird, the kid who opening up one of the first flagship stores from an independent artist in South Florida. Is what well, is, is the first flagship store from an independent artist in South Florida. So, you know, I just wanted to show him that, man, with that LH in the back. Man, actually, I'm so high that I don't even remember when we released it because it was just going, I was just going fast at that time. I was turned, man. I had music stacked, I got music stacked up to the ceiling. I got my store finished. Man, my girl looking better than she ever did before. She maturing in ways I could never imagine. My son starting to walk crazy. I'm just going crazy right now, man. So I don't even remember when I dropped Live House Season, actually. Um, I did. I did. I went back to my roots actually with Live House Season Two. Um, I, I um I did freestyles. You know, I did Trap House freestyle. I did Squares freestyle. I did the Lauren Hill freestyle. I did um a couple more freestyles, and and I gave them some of the Berg that used to be on Strictly for the Streets, like the the the, the just straight snapping Berg, and everybody wanted Strictly for the Streets for. So I said, I'm not doing Strictly for the Streets 4 because I wanted new waves, new energy. So I dropped the Live House season. But a lot of people don't know some of the, most of the songs that's on Live House season would have been Strictly for the Streets 4. You know what I mean? So I just gave them a mixture of original tracks that didn't make the album. And I gave them freestyle tracks that would have been Strictly for the Streets 4. So that's probably why I got that many numbers of tracks. Then the one you could get off of iTunes and Spotify and all that, the, the more commercial platforms that don't have none of the freestyles, it's just all the original songs on there, which is produced by my in-house producers, Young Zo, DJ on the beat and stuff like that. So it's real, it's real complicated, I guess. I don't know. Um, Obscene and the DJs did that. Obscene, Smokey Band, Killer K, they did that. I just let them do. I just told them what I like to be the intro and they just went and whipped that up, you feel me? So. Them boys did their thing on that. I can't take the shine for it. See, I don't know. It's been different. It's, it's different. I can't really. I can't really say it about that tape. I can say it about my album. What, what my last tape, Damage Is Done One. I can't say it about that tape. Like I say, because it got different feelings. It's like a gumbo, a berg in there. You know, I got freestyles over here. I got originals over there this type of freestyle, that type of freestyle. So it's just like a crazy gumbo. It's a mixtape. It's like, you know what I mean? It's not the album where you will have skits um, separating the moods and, and doing the transitions and stuff. It's just a mixtape, you feel me? 
So I can't really say I got a crazy different flow and a whole science behind the, the order and stuff. All right, so I, I highlight a couple of my favorite tracks, you feel me? Um, I ain't gonna go here. I don't even got the track list in front of me, but I know them like the back of my hand. But some I start with the original songs because them the ones I really care about the most. I want people to go download them off iTunes, hint, hint, and shit. So I say one of my favorite ones on there was Kodak Black, um, Heart of 100 Men. The reason Heart of 100 Men, like, kind of one of my favorites and shit because when I met Kodak Black it was like it was it was crazy how we met and shit like that through my little sisters my little sisters was going to school up in Kodak Black hood they came home one day talking about Kodak Black Kodak Black it was a long time ago so I started fucking with his music and then like the next day I met him at the studio when I was at the um studio with Jim Jones he pulled up we was in his hood again so we he pulled up and we just chopped it up and then he DM'd me on Twitter, came through the studio, and we dropped that song. We dropped that one and another one. And it's crazy because I, he said something in the hook that I told him, no, nah, I think you should say this and shit. So we was really vibing. But I could, I, could, I could actually point out a lot of my different tracks now because I'm not working online with my collaborations. I'm working hands-on with all my collaborations, even from the Fat Trail song. I don't know if you skipped this segment, but another song I... Um, one of Sick New Out is on some more shit with Fat Trail. Like, he came down from D.C. He was performing at Black Diamonds and shit. My girl was hosting that same night and shit. So I pulled up there and we chopped it up. The next night we went to the studio and knocked out two songs. And um, on some more shit was one of my songs. One of my songs that I was about to put on the album, but I just gave it to him. Like, nah, Trail, turn. I'm trying to turn. We turn. Everybody turn. Let's just give him that work right now, and I'll hold the other one down. So on some more shit will be the next favorite. Then um, what else songs I got? Clap It Up. Clap It Up, a dope song to me, because I just started experimenting with a different sound. That come through Young Zo, the producer Young Zo. And, um... Yeah, it's a different type of flow. It's like kind of like West Coast inspired, I'd say a little bit, or like 1997, 1998 inspired when people was doing more up tempo shit. You know what I mean? So it's a dope song. Clap it up. That's one of my favorites. I put that out too. And that's probably about it. Like one of them, um, I like Trap House Freestyle a lot too. That shit was dope. I was about to put that out on, uh, I think I was about to put that out on. Oh, the 10 year anniversary from when um, Gucci Mane Trap House um, mixtape came out or something. And that's why I did it, but this shit came out so hard, I'm like, nah, I'm gonna let Gucci get his shine and just put that on my next mixtape and shit. So I wanted to drop that on the um, 10th anniversary, like in like, oh, the Gucci and shit like that. But yeah, I got Square Bricks freestyle, I like that a lot. Um, I got the 911 freestyle. I think I said something about the store and not when I was my first time ever rapping about my store or something. You know, I got a couple of them on there that I fuck with, but like I say, all that shit was just stuff that ain't make the album to me. Uh, my main focus is Damage Is Done Part 2, the album. You know, I, I got a lot of guns. I've been letting collect dust on that album. I'm touching on a lot of topics I ain't really talked about before. You feel me? Yeah, the, 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 one of the interesting facts was, like I said earlier, that it was kind of supposed to be Strictly for the Streets Part 4. You feel me? It, a lot of them freestyles were supposed to be on Strictly for the Streets Part 4. But I just said I want new energy. I don't want to ride that old wave shit, all that old shit we did. So, yeah, that's probably going to be the most interesting fact that that was supposed to be Strictly for the Streets Part 4, along with, another, along with a couple more songs that I'm holding for the album. So a lot of fans, they, they, my fans went hard on me about that. Like, yo, we want Strictly for the Streets 4. We want the 4. What's Live House season? But a lot of them don't know that. Like 70, 60, 70% of the, that project was supposed to be Strictly for the Streets 4. So that would probably be the most interesting fact.